2019 Make Smoking History Forest Rally, the biggest rally of the WA calendar, a two-day event that wraps state and national and clubman series all together. It's a big rally, and this is how we went. Now, if I'm honest, I'm not a big fan of having the largest rally of the year first, particularly since there's been an eight-month break since the end of last season. So we loaded up everything and got ready to head down to Bustleton for the start of the rally and wouldn't you know it, a thunderstorm rolled in and it followed us most of the way down. Uh, we ran a three car team this year consisting of Ben and John in the Spec-C WRX, Mark and Graham in the Celica GT4 and Lance with standing co-driver Ross for the Clubman section which was a Saturday only. Friday night the rally started on the tarmac in Bustleton. Most teams took it easy, although looking at this footage, Mike Joss decided it was a good idea to hang the tail out and he wasn't alone. The whites in their Sylvias also did the same thing. Come Saturday morning and that's when things really start to happen. First up we have a service up in Nanup, about 50 k south of Bustleton. Get the cars changed over from tarmac to gravel, take the lights off, put the decent gravel rally tyres on and away they go. And the first few stages, apart from the drivers complaining that the surface was very slippery, went pretty well. Now this year, there were some actual bushfires that occurred within weeks of the forest rally. And because of that, it meant that the organisers had to change some of the stages and actually compact the rally slightly from what it had been in the past. It meant that Saturday was actually an earlier day than usual, which was actually really good. And so after Saturday's stages, Lance and Ross actually did very well considering the misfire and managed to finish third in Clubman Masters. We did have a slight problem with Ben and John in the Spec C when the, uh, the car developed a misfire that was actually traced back to a wiring problem in the uh, top of the gearbox. Actually the speedo sensor uh, caused a problem with the engine management system and it's putting the car into, uh, into launch control mode. We managed to sort it out at the uh, afternoon service and they went on and didn't have any more troubles with it for the rest of the weekend. Ben and John went well as a new pairing and they uh, got into the group of the rally pretty well, hovering around the, uh, the top 10 for most of the day. Uh, Mark and Graham, also a fairly new pairing in the Celica, they went pretty well as well and finished just outside of the top 15. So with day one and heat one of the forest done, we were stoked because all three of our cars finished the day, which was much better than 2018, where we had an absolutely disastrous first day of the rally. So Heat 2 actually starts on the Saturday evening. It's a repeat of uh, Friday, basically. You go back down, do the tarmac stages, run around there again. Uh, this time, though, rather than doing two separate stages, it's one stage with four laps, and then cars up into Park Ferme overnight, back to Nanup on Sunday morning to continue with the gravel. No major drama with the first few stages on Sunday morning. However, by the second service, Ben and John were having trouble with punctures. They'd actually punctured two tyres in the stage and actually had to drive back to service on a flat tyre on the rear. To pay kudos where kudos is due, the Zestinos, even though the tyre was completely flat, stayed on the rim with that 12 kilometre drive and we changed it in service. We weren't the only ones having trouble with tyres. A few teams got flat tyres during the day, probably a combination of the dusty roads and also some loose rocks because of the lack of rains and they knocked a few tyres off rims. After the last service of the day, there was two stages to go to the finish, and that's when it all went pear-shaped. On the very last stage of the rally, Ben and John had got a flat tyre, changed the tyre, and then they were charging to catch up time. They ran a bit wide on the outside of a corner and rolled the spec C end for end. Luckily, and most importantly, both the guys walked away without a scratch. However, unfortunately, the car was very heavily damaged, and we don't think we can repair it. And so again, we got to the end of a forest rally without our full team making the finish podium. Good news is Mark and Graham went very well. They finished in 18th position and had a trouble free run without a scratch on the GT4 all weekend. Excellent. A couple of other notable performances and things that happened on the rally. The AP4 cars that I've talked about in a previous video really came to the fore on this rally and did very well by the Australian Championship level when John O'Dowd and Tony Fever took the win in their Skoda. So well done to John. And actually, the car that John won in last year in the state championship, so WRX or GR Hatch, 
But Tom Wilde and Matty Kirkhouse were using that car and actually were leading state championship and doing very well in the ARC. Unfortunately, they too got a flat tyre, lost four minutes in the stage and also had a little bit of turbo trouble and that dropped them down a little bit and they finished on the podium, but not with the win. Our Irish mates, Barry McGuinness, did very well as well in his WRX first forest rally. So well done, Baz. Good drive, mate. Fifth on Saturday and then eased off a little bit and 10th on Sunday. So great drive. And also to Glenn Alcorn, who has spent months and months and months transforming his four-door RS2000 into a Group 4 weapon, basically, and uh, came out in his first rally and finished on the podium in the two-wheel drive in the state. So good drive for you too, mate. Well done. Another great performance was young Kelly Thomas. Now, if you've watched any of our videos on our Zestino rally sprints, you know that Kelly actually won the series last year. Well, actually, she only got a license, or a driver's license, a week before the Forest Rally and entered the rally. So this was her first drive in an Australian Rally Championship event, two-day event, finished the event with very, very little trouble most of the weekend. Dad Dave alongside calling the notes, which must have been a sphincter moment for him on many occasions, not used to being in the uh, the co-driver's seat, no doubt. Uh, great drive and finished in the solid 17th position. So well done to Kelly and Dave in that too. Also uh, running as a bit of a satellite team to us with uh, Karen navigating for Hugh Harmer in the, uh, the V8 Commodore. They had a great time, an absolute ball all weekend. And unfortunately on liaison between the second last stage and the last stage, uh, they had some uh, horrible noises coming from underneath the car, tail shaft or rear diff sort of noises. Um, and Hugh didn't want to risk uh, damaging the car anymore or blowing up on the way to uh, the stage. So unfortunately, before they made the last stage, they had to withdraw. In the clubman side of things, a, uh, a big thumbs up to Tim Bayer and Gary McCarr, who did an outstanding job in their XL and took the win, the first clubman win for them. So well done, guys. That was a great drive as well. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed our take on the uh, 2019 Forest Rally. Please like, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And we'll catch you again soon. Cheers.